days of prayer here this week, and it's amazing to see what God has already begun doing. People came in and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, there were people crying, and God was just meeting their needs. We had a section where there was personal prayer, where we could just pray for personal needs. We had a section where there was prayer for, for our country, and people could just sit and pray for South Africa and for what God is doing. We had a section where we could pray for Grace Place, where we prayed for every one of you, for what God was doing in your life, for how He would move us forward spiritually, for how He would open our hearts, and for how we would be able to still continue constantly forgive and and love and live out this kingdom that we are a part of the most amazing kingdom we prayed for your jobs for your situations for your families we prayed for all those things and as we were praying i know that doors were opened strongholds were broken amen and in those things that were broken and the doors that were open all we need to do is take that step and walk through and so i just want to thank those of you who came over those 6, 12, 18 hours of prayer that we had. Some of you came for uh, many hours. Some of you came for a few minutes. Thank you so much for coming. Some of you couldn't make it. You prayed at home. Thank you so much. Because I really believe that this was something that God wanted us to do. It was laid upon my heart to do. And it's not the end. It's only the first one of many to come. Because I know that as we pray, God is going to do what he needs to do in our lives. And we need to surrender to him. Because we are part of a kingdom that knows no end. And in this kingdom... If we don't understand what God is doing in our lives, how can we help other people understand? If we don't know what God wants to do in our minds and our hearts, how on earth can we move forward and allow God to, and, and actually move and minister to other people? Because this kingdom isn't a closed kingdom. Do you know that in our kingdom, this kingdom of God, the gate is open? It is not a closed gate where we're inside you and it's just for us and it's our blessing and it's just for me and it's just for you. It's an open gate, and, and, and God wants to welcome as many people. He, he sent His only Son, Jesus, to die for us so that, so that people could be saved, not just us, but everyone. And so we need to get to a place in our lives where we understand what God's kingdom is all about. We need to understand what, why Jesus did what He did. We need to understand that as Jesus uh, did certain things, we need to do certain things. And so that's what I want to speak to you about, our mindset. We need to change our mindset. We need to change the way that we think because if we're going to keep thinking the way we're thinking, we're never going to move forward. I mean, if I had to ask you all here today and I could ask myself the same question, how often do we find ourselves thinking about things that we shouldn't be thinking about? How often do we waste time thinking about what we think somebody else said about us or did to us? And we sit there thinking and we, and we never move forward in any way. We, we think about the past all the time and what people did to us. And if we saw them, what we would do to them or what I should have said. And we sit there thinking of so many things and we waste time. And I believe that's a trick of the enemy to make us think of things that we shouldn't be thinking so that we cannot think forward and move forward and allow God to shape our minds and to shape our hearts into doing what he's called us to do. This is a kingdom of light. And the minute we look back, there is a shadow. The minute we're thinking about things that we shouldn't be thinking of, unholy things or things about other people, there is a shadow and we shouldn't allow those shadows in. The Bible says we're to have the mind of Christ. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, amazing scriptures that we all know so well. The Bible says we shouldn't be conformed to this world but transformed by the renewing of our minds. There are two kingdoms, a kingdom of light and a kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness is just conformed constantly to the same thing the kingdom of light is transformed and we do that by renewing our minds but what happens is we sit back and we just know oh, well you know what this is life this is what we think and haven't you noticed what we think we begin to believe how many of you ever thought of something that's not even true but it became a reality and truth to you but it wasn't actually the truth we've all done that and we've realized oh that's not what was actually happening but we made it a real thing in our lives because we've been thinking about it all the time so God's word gives us some instruction here, and we need to change the way we think. We have two dogs, Rusty and Milo. Rusty is a golden retriever. I was watching them this morning, and Milo's a little sausage dog. Now, I'm sure you all know who the boss is. They're both male dogs. Milo, the little one, this high, that high, is the boss. And so what happens is every single morning and every single night when we feed them, uh, we put their food in. And Rusty goes, and the first thing he does is he crouches down and he sits with his paws around his food and he starts growling. Milo is on the other side, wherever he's sleeping, he's doing his thing. But Rusty will just begin to growl. 
and we have to shout because we live in the townhouse complex and the neighbor's bedroom's right above there and the other one's right above there. And so we, we've got to keep him quiet. And the first thing he does, he doesn't eat. He sits there and he growls and he looks like this out of the corner of his eye. The other dog is like miles away. Milo's down there. And I cannot understand why he does it every single time. He's 10 years old. Every single time. And he'll sit there. He won't even eat because he's so scared the other dog's going to come and steal his food. But the other dog doesn't come and steal his food. And so he'll take a bite, quickly chew, and then he'll growl. And he'll chew and he'll growl. And eventually he'll finish his food, but it takes so long. And I wished, I wished he was here this morning, because maybe he'd change his mindset. I wished he could change the way he was thinking, because the other dog's not interested in his food. The other dog's got his own food. Milo's got his own food. And this is what we do. We're sitting around what we have. This is mine. And we're barking at everybody else around us. Leave what is mine. We're not willing to change. We're not willing to be giving. We're not willing to be lavish. We're not willing to be a blessing to others because this is mine. This is my kingdom. And so we sit around what we have and that's all we ever get. And so if that dog can't change his mindset as a dog, but you and I as human beings, we have been given the ability to change our mindset. Do you know that once our minds have been set in one, in one way and it's wrong, we can reset our minds. Listen to what the Bible says from the New Living Translation, Romans 12 verse 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Let God transform us into a new person by changing the way we think. Then you will learn to know God's will for your life, which is good and which is pleasing and which is perfect. We need to begin to change the way we believe things. We need to change the way we think. We need to change the way we do things. Because I know that outside pressures are constantly there and we feel like we need to conform, but we need to be transformed. You see, the kingdom that we come from is a kingdom where there would be hatred, there would be unforgiveness, there would be uh, things that are not, not for this kingdom, there would be fear, and there would be unbelief. But we have been called into a kingdom of light where things are different. We've been called into a kingdom of light where we need to have the mind of Christ. And so I'd like you to open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. We're going to read a scripture from Colossians, and then we're going to read one from Philippians, which is just the book before that. So if you can open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3. If we build the right mindset, we will build the right kingdom. And until we can do that, we're not going to build the right kingdom in our lives. And that's the kingdom of light. It's the kingdom of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Colossians 3 verse 1, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of the Father. We were raised from death to life in this kingdom. So we have been raised with Christ. Think of things that are, that are above. Verse 2, set your minds on things above, not on things of the earth. The Amplified says, set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above, the heavenly things, not on things that are on the earth, which have only temporal value. Think of things above. Think on and focus on things above. Let your earthly practice be worthy of your heavenly position. We are seated in Christ, the Bible says. Let your earthly practice be worthy of your heavenly position. How are we practicing this life here on earth? Is it worthy of the king? Is it worthy of this kingdom? Because we truly need to change. You see, I can't look into your heart and see what's going on. There, every one of us here at this service and the next... God knows what's going on. If we would just give it to him, he will change our lives. Trouble will not find us. Destruction will not find us. But we need to give what we have to God. Give him our hearts. Let's go to Philippians. Just flip a few pages back. Philippians chapter 2. See, when we renew our minds, we have the power to transform our lives. Renewal brings transformation. And so this is really what I want to speak about today, the mind of Christ. This may get a little bit difficult because, you know, when we think of how our minds must be, it's all about blessing and the next blessing I'm going to get and what God wants to give me and what God wants to do in my life and uh, the next thing and the next and the ministry and, and where God is taking me and the anointings to be great. And yes, God wants all of those things, but we're going to find out something a little bit different now and look at Philippians 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you. I almost feel like telling you to tell your neighbor, say, this mind be in you. Maybe I should do that. Tell your neighbor, let this mind be in you. Just felt right to do that. 
which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being, formed and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you, this mindset, if we can have this mindset in the kingdom, do you know that our marriages will change? Do you know that our relationship with our children will change? The things we do on a daily basis will change when we have this mindset. Everything around us, the victory that we need over personal issues and things will begin to change if we have this mindset. And so I want to speak to you about this mindset. There are four things, but I've I've put them into two different categories. And so I want to tell you, the Bible says this, he made himself of no reputation and he humbled himself. So let's find out what this actually means. If, if we're made of no reputation, I mean, we all have a reputation, don't we? And we say, oh, my reputation's at stake. I better do this or I better do that. I better behave or my reputation at work is at stake or my company's reputation is at stake. We say those things, but listen to what, what this says. He made himself of no reputation this means Jesus was willing to sacrifice himself. He didn't mind about his reputation. He was willing to have self-sacrifice in his life. When I'm willing not to live up to my, or not live up to my reputation, but not have a reputation because maybe I should, I'm willing to self-sacrifice. And self-sacrifice is giving up your own interests or wishes in order to help others. It's giving up our own wishes in order to help others. It's giving up our own interests in order to advance a cause. When last did we give up something to advance the cause of Jesus Christ? When last did we give up something in order to help somebody else? The Bible says he, had no rep he, he, he made himself of no reputation and he humbled himself. To humble yourself, this is the quality of having a modest or a low view of your importance. Have you seen some people I just think they're so important? You can just see the way they walk around. I'm more important than you and look at me, I have arrived. Well, that's not humility. Humility is having a modest or a low view. Sorry, that's what the meaning is of your importance. You know, we need to maybe lower our importance a little bit and understand who we are, who we are in Christ. We are important because of Him, not because of us. We are blessed because of Him, not because of us. And so Jesus made Himself of no reputation and He humbled Himself. I know we want to keep our reputation. I know we want to self-preserve. But Jesus made himself of no reputation. There was self-sacrifice in his life. Just speak to a person who's gone to war to go and fight for their country and for, fight, to fight for what they believe. That is self-sacrifice. They were willing to give up what they have that's dear to them to help others or to bring freedom. Self-sacrifice. Speak to a fireman or a firewoman who's gone off and run into a building to save people that are, that are in trouble. That is self-sacrifice. They hope they're going to come out alive, but the chances are they might not. Self-sacrifice, willing to do something for a greater cause. Whatever we're willing to do in our lives for a greater cause becomes self-sacrifice. When was the last time there was self-sacrifice in our lives? Or do we always get our way? Do we always want what we want? When last did your wife get what she wanted? When last did your husband get what he wanted? When last did your kids get what they wanted? When last? I hope the answer is the same the other way. Okay. You cooked supper for her. Okay. We're going to talk about humility in just a minute. Just hang on. Okay. Remember Jesus humbled himself as well. Okay. But he became of no reputation, self-sacrifice. When last were we willing to do this? You know, we all have this element of pride, I suppose, this element of rep my reputation, and we want to be right, and we want to always have our way. But when last did we just let it go, and let it go, and self-sacrifice, and say, this is okay, this is going to be fine. When last, I'm reminded of John Harper, when the Titanic sank, he was in the frigid waters, and he was a Christian. And he was swimming around trying to get people saved. And the minute somebody would not give their life to Jesus, he gave whatever he had to them. Because he said, rather, you, you live and I hope that you find Christ because I know where I'm going. And in the end, he gave his life jacket away to somebody who wouldn't give their lives to Jesus. And he died. Self-sacrifice. 
He knew what that was like. Jesus, when he went to the cross, self-sacrifice. He died for you and I, and he humbled himself. He humbled himself. When last did we humble ourselves? When last did we do something for a greater cause or do something for someone else, even at the expense of what we have? When last were we a blessing and it became a sacrifice? But we knew we needed to be that blessing. You know, when God speaks, we need to listen. When God speaks, we need to hear. And when God speaks, we need to do. And so Jesus, the mind of Christ, there was self-sacrifice. There was humility. In God's kingdom, there needs to be self-sacrifice and humility. The second thing is this, servanthood and obedience. Jesus took on the form of a bondservant and became obedient to the point of death. A servant is one who follows the direction of someone else, whether they agree or not. Jesus followed the plan and the will of God. We need to follow the plan and the will of God. I agree with his word. I'm sure you agree with his word. And so we become servants, but beyond that even, we've become children of God. Sons and daughters who have been adopted where we can say, Abba, Father, Daddy, Lord. And so here, we are children of God in this kingdom of light. But Jesus took on the attitude and the heart and the mind of a servant. When last did we serve one another? Like truly serve one another? Just gave without expecting anything in return. We look at people and we go, you know what, if I serve this person well, maybe I'll get something in return. When last did we just serve without getting anything in return? I know when they go on to GPS, there is serving without expecting anything in return. I think the only thing we expect in return is for lives to change. That's all. And that's what Jesus did. He went and he was obedient because he wanted your life and my life to change. He was obedient. He was a servant. Obedience means this, because Jesus became obedient to the point of death. It is submission to someone else's authority. Submission to someone else's authority. We need to obey the Lord. There are times we need to obey one another. There is love in obedience. And obedience is simply submission to another's authority. Jesus submitted his life to the authority of God and he gave his life so that we could live. When last were we obedient in this way? When last did we just obey what God was saying? When last did you actually obey? You're walking somewhere. I know I bring this up quite often because it happens to me. And the Holy Spirit impresses on our hearts and says, go and say this or go and do this. And you know it's the Holy Spirit speaking. We know. It's just out of the blue, out of nowhere this has happened. It's not you thinking. It's the Holy Spirit leading you to do something. When last did we just obey? In that obedience, there is blessing. In that obedience, lives will change. In that obedience, the kingdom of God expands. Because it's not what I'm necessarily going to say, but what the Holy Spirit's going to do in that person's life. Go and tell someone that God loves them. Go and minister Jesus to somebody. Go and be the light in someone's life who is suffering in the darkness. Obedient, even though it's uncomfortable. In the kingdom of God, church, we can reset our minds. If we have had not had the mind of Christ, if we are not obedient, if we're not self-sacrificing, we can reset the way we think. Because that's the way we become children of the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, we need to honor the king. That's what this is all about. That's why we're here. It's all about Jesus. And so I wanted to ask you, when in your life recently have you had these attributes? When were you truly a servant or were you always expecting people to serve you? You know, when you, you, you land up in a position of authority, sometimes you look at things and go, why should I pick up that paper? I shouldn't. You know, I'm the pastor of the church. I shouldn't have to do that. I shouldn't. But we should always be willing to serve. We should always be willing to be humble. We should always be willing to self-sacrifice. We should always be willing to be obedient, no matter what the cost for the cause of Christ. Because that's what he did for you and I. And so I want to ask you all to bow your heads. Close your eyes. And I want you to think just for a minute, of how life would be if our thinking changed from 
getting revenge on somebody or what I should have said or what should have happened in the past, which we actually can't change, to setting our minds on things that are above. Imagine swapping this and resetting our minds to things that are above, to honoring God in everything that we do. Imagine instead of spending those five minutes of thinking of things that we shouldn't be thinking of and thinking about what God can do in our lives. Imagine thinking into the future and just pondering on God and meditating on His Holy Word. Imagine how God would speak to us. The Holy Spirit would prompt us to do the things we need to do. Imagine you know what's happening in your day because you've spent that time. Imagine you know what's going to go on because you have the mind of Christ and let this mind be in you which also was in Christ. That we would humble ourselves to His plan. When we're so busy thinking in the, of the past and other things, we cannot humble ourselves because we're not thinking. We're not resetting the way we think. Therefore, we are not resetting the way we do things. Because the doing comes from the thinking. And a challenge to every one of us, me, you, is for us to begin to renew our minds to the Word of God. When those thoughts come, reset what you're thinking. Because when we're building the wrong things, we're building for the wrong kingdom. Let's reset what we're thinking and begin to build for the right kingdom, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of love, the kingdom of God. And let's be citizens where we can truly say, Lord, when you search my heart, you see. And you don't see those shadows of darkness. You see that everything I have, I've given to you. That even my attitude and my way of thinking has changed and I'm obedient and I'm a servant. greatest place to be, Jesus said, is if you want to be great, be a servant of all. Jesus came and he was a servant. And he died for us in obedience. And there was self-sacrifice. He gave his all. And that's why we can be in this kingdom of light. So Lord, today, even though we've heard messages on renewing the mind, we've heard messages on how we need to stop thinking about negative things. Today we have learned, Lord, that in your kingdom, we have heard that the mind that we need to have is the same as the mind of Christ. Where it was all for you. Where what he did was all for us. So Lord, we want to say this today, whatever we do, in word or in deed and in thought, may it all be for you, so that your people can be touched, so that your glory can be revealed, so that your love can be seen, so that your grace can be experienced. So Lord, we say our lives are all for you. And as we surrender everything to you including what we think may we begin to love our wives like we should may wives love their husbands like they should may parents love their children like they should and children love their parents like they should may we love one another as this is a great, the great command that you've given us to love one another as you have loved us when we have this mind Lord this world will change we so often look for these big changes all at once, but Lord, the change begins with me. And it begins with everyone here seated and standing. It begins with each one of us. Help us, Lord, when we are tested next time. When things happen, help us to be humble. Help us to be self-sacrificing, no matter what the return. Because Lord Jesus, when you died, you died while we were sinners. You died not knowing if somebody would receive heaven as their home or not. 
And so, Lord, let us be like that where we will give and help no matter what the outcome, no matter what the return, no matter whether someone's changed or not. Let us do our part and sow the seeds that need to be sown. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this. In the mighty and the wonderful name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Amen.